I'll give you two examples, a famous failure and a famous success. First, the famous failure. It's a business example. In the US, we have a product called TiVo. It's a digital video recorder. When TiVo was introduced into the marketplace about 12 or 13 years ago, it was and continues to be the single best product on the market, hands down, undisputed. It is the best technology out there and continues to be this to this day. Right? And if you ask most organizations, you ask most companies, why did your product fail? Why did your company fail? They usually give you some combination of the same few reasons. Undercapitalized, didn't have enough money. Poorly executed, wrong people, you know, uh, bad market conditions. Okay, that's the recipe for success. So TiVo has the best product on the market, execution flawless. Venture capital up the wazoo. Money, no problem. They hired the best engineers money could buy. People, not a problem. And the market conditions are incredible. In the US, we use TiVo as a verb. The unaided awareness of the brand is in the 90th, 90th percentile. It's common. Market conditions, fantastic. TiVo is a commercial and financial failure. They've never made money. And when their company went public, it launched at about 40 or $50 and then very quickly plummeted and except for a couple of little blips, has never ever traded above 10 bucks. And the reason is because they took this brilliant product, brilliantly executed, brilliantly funded, and they told the mass market, we have a product that pauses live TV, skips commercials, memorizes our, uh, your viewing habits on your behalf, and records without you even asking. And the cynical, practical majority said, I don't believe you. I don't need it. I don't like it. I don't want it. You're scaring me. And so they didn't buy one. There are a few early adopters, and to this day, they love their TiVos and have upgraded it every year, but it wasn't enough to make it tip. Now imagine if TiVo had launched their product to this population, explaining why it exists. If you're the kind of person who likes to take total control over every aspect of your life, boy, do we have a product for you. It pauses live TV, skips commercials, memorizes reviewing habits, and records on your behalf without you even asking. In this instance, what the product does serves as tangible proof of why it exists. It is not the reason we make the choice in the first place. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Now I'll give you my favorite example of the law of diffusion. Martin Luther King, in 1963, August of 1963, gave his I Have a Dream speech, and 250,000 people showed up on the mall in Washington to hear Dr. King speak. No invitations were sent out, and there was no website to check the date. How many emails did you get to show up here today? Right, it was seven, eight, it was 500 people here, right? Nothing. Right? Dr. King was not the only man in America who knew what had to change to bring about civil rights in that country. He wasn't the only great orator of the day. He wasn't the only man who suffered in a pre-civil rights America. In fact, he suffered less than most because he was off at university. He wasn't even the perfect man. He had his complexities, and we just don't talk about that stuff. The difference is he had a gift. He didn't go around telling people what we need to do, what we need to do, how we're going to do it. He went around and told people, I believe, I believe, I believe. And people who believed what he believed took his cause and made it their own. And they told people what they believed. And those people took that cause and made it their own, and they told people what they believed. And some built structures to get the word out more efficiently. And lo and behold, on the right day, on the right time, a quarter of a million people showed up on the mall to hear him speak. How many of them showed up for him? Zero. They showed up for themselves. It's what they believed. It's the America that they wanted to live in. It's the America that they wanted to raise their children in that inspired them to get on a bus, travel for eight hours, stand in Washington in the sun in the middle of summer simply to hear him speak. Simply showing up was one of the things that they did in their life to prove what they believe. Even Dr. King, it wasn't about black versus white. Dr. King had a belief that there are two types of laws in this world. There were the laws made by man and there were the laws made by a higher authority. And not until the laws of man are consistent with the laws of our higher authority would we live in a just world. The civil rights movement was the perfect way for him to bring his cause to life. Oh, and by the way, he gave the I have a dream speech, not the I have a plan speech. Everybody's got their comprehensive 12-point plan these days. We're not inspired by your plan. We're inspired by what you believe and where you're going. If we look to the answer, as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more...